Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BTNHD, and today is all about managing your servicing stack updates with SCCM. So let's get started. So the first thing that I did or what I wanted to do within my environment was create a deployment package with already servicing stack updates that I already had within my all software updates node. So you will want to go inside software library and within there, go to overview, software updates, all software updates, and on the search bar, I typed in servicing stacks and that gave me a list of all the updates that I kind of have already synced up within my SCCM slash WSUS server. And then from there, uh, I went all the way to the bottom and I just hold down the control key and I selected the ones that I wanted to be part of this deployment package. Now you don't really need to do this, but again, I did it within my environment because that's the way I want to do it. Plus, the deployment package will be used when you are uh, creating automatic deployment um, rule. So I'm going to show you guys. Don't worry about it. So from here, once I did my control and selected the service stack updates that I wanted, I right clicked. And from here, I want to create a software update group. Give it a name. I give it this particular name and I clicked on create. Once that was done, I went inside the software update group located my group, I right clicked on it and did deploy. Within the deploy uh, wizard, you provide a deployment name, I change it to this. Once you give it a name, you need to give it a collection. So click on browse and provide a collection. Now, I gave it the BTNHD workstation test. That's the collection that I have. Clicked OK, click next. For the deployment settings, uh, I left everything as the default, but configure it for your environment. Clicked on next. Scheduling again, change it for your environment. Click next here for the user experience. It's really up to you. Change it for your environment. Click next. Alerts, the same thing. Modify it for your environment so it could work around your, your LAN, right? Click next. Deployment packages. I don't have a deployment package, so I'm going to create a new deployment package, right? Provide a name, and then you need to provide a UNC path. So within my UNC path, within my SCCM server, I have a folder core sources, which I've used throughout a lot of my SCCM videos with you guys. So within here, I created a folder and I called it SSU for servicing stack updates. Double clicked on it. I'm going to copy the UNC path and I'm going to paste it inside that text box, right? Uh, what's going to happen is that those updates that I selected within my group are going to be pulled down from the Windows server online and pushed down locally to that folder. Okay, I'm going to show you guys. So click next here. Then we need to provide a DP. So click on add, uh, pick distribution points. I pick my DP, press OK. If you have multiple distribution points, select all of them. It's up to you. I only have one. Within my environment, I actually have two, but I just picked one. Click next. Uh, download location. Uh, I left it as the default. Download software updates from the internet. Click next here. Next again. Download settings, the only thing that I modified was the first option. I changed it to download software updates from the distribution point and install. And then I click next. Nice little summary of all the updates that are going to be kind of grabbed within the Windows server online and pushed down locally, which I'm going to show you guys. So when you click next here, it's going to start doing its thing. And if you go back inside the UNC path, you're going to see a bunch of folders with gibberish names. This is where uh, the cat files, your Windows cat files are going to be dropped into that, right? Again, we're only going to create a deployment package. And uh, this is the way I did it within my environment. Once everything is completed, you're going to get green check marks, which is a good thing. And we're going to close it. Now, from here, I right clicked on my deployment package and I basically clicked on show members. And if you click on show members, it's going to give you a list of all the updates that you kind of pulled down to that package. Also, when you click inside the deployment packages, you're going to see your package that you created. Cool, right? With your uh, Windows 10 servicing stack updates. Now, we want to go inside automatic deployment rule and we're going to right click on it and we're going to pick create automatic deployment rule and we're going to provide a name. Once you provide your name within the collection, click on browse pick your collection. I pick BTNHD workstation tests, click OK and click next here. This is really up to you. I can't really tell you guys, OK, this is what you need to definitely do. I, I think I've left everything as the default and clicked on next. Now for the software updates, 
These are the following uh, attributes that I picked for this deployment rule. Uh, the first one that I picked was product. And if you click on items to find, click on that and expand that window and go all, all the way to the bottom. And the products that I want to locate is Windows 10 LTBS. It's really up to you what type of products you want to find in your environment. So I can't tell you like, okay, this is what you need to do for it to work. Then click OK. Right. So for my product, I did Windows 10 or Windows 10 LTSB. Now, the next attribute or property filter that you need to pick, which I picked within my environment, is title. So I picked title. Again, click on items to find. And the particular search text that you need to pick here, I did servicing stack. And then once you type in servicing stack, just add it and then click OK. Property filters that I added was product and title. Uh, product and title is Windows 10 or Windows 10 LTBS and title is servicing pack. Now, if you click on preview, it should give you a nice preview of everything with those items that you pick. It's like a filter. So I have a lot of updates here. I have 42 updates. If you want to customize it even more, you could actually uh, add more search text items. I added a couple of text searches with a minus. When you add a minus, for example, I added minus x86, it's going to remove any service pack that is 86 bit. I only want the 64 bit. So when you mod when you do that modification, you're going to see it's going to get dropped. I had 42, now I have 26, which is a pretty good number. And if you want to add more kind of text to eliminate stuff, I added minus arm 64. And then when you look at the list again, uh, 16 updates, that's not that bad, 60 updates, that's what I wanted. I didn't want 42 updates, that's just too many updates. Uh, I'm dealing with only 64-bit operating system within my environment, and I don't need 42 updates. So it really depends on how you customize the title. If you use a minus with certain text terms, it will reduce the list. So this is what I use, okay? Uh, once you complete your product and title, again, you are able to pick other property filters to kind of enhance the search. But for me, I only use product and title. So click on next. From here, modify the schedule for the rule. When to run, when not to run is up to you. Click next. Deployment schedule, modify it within your environment. Within my user experience, I did basically software updates, servers, and workstations. Those are the ones that I enabled, but you might have something different within your environment. Once you do this, click on next. Within alerts, customize it for your environment. Click next. Deployment packages. This is where the deployment package that I created with you guys at the very beginning. I, I'm going to select one or you could create one because I already created one with you guys. Uh, I'm actually going to have select a deployment package, click on browse, and I'm going to pick the one that we did together. Okay. And then I'm going to click on next for the download location. I'm going to leave it as the default, which is download software updates from the internet. Click next here for the language selection. I'm going to leave it as the default. Can't really make any modifications here. So I'm going to click next from download settings. You are able to change the settings here. Um, I think within my environment, I changed the first option to do download software updates from the distribution point and install. So uh, again, it really depends on your environment. I can't tell you guys not to do this and do this for it to work. So make sure that you are doing it correctly within your environment. Okay. So click next. Nice little summary. Click next again. Get the completion with the green check mark. And that always means that's a good thing, right? And that's it, guys. That is how we create an automatic deployment rule so we can manage our servicing stack updates for Windows 10. If you have any questions or comments, leave them at the bottom. I would like to know how you do it within your environment. Uh, please give me some details, feedbacks. So I would like to see how you do it. Uh, don't forget about hitting that like button. Also, subscribe. And I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.